Angela Farrow, and you are listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for The Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is actress Angela Farrow. That has done many, many projects such as uh, Ethla, uh, The Life You Save, and many, many, many others. Hello. Hello, Mike. How are you? So tell us a little bit what's, what's going on, what, what you're doing this year, what we're releasing, what what, what we ha- got to see last year. I mean, what has been recently released? So, let's, so right now, I do have on the YouTube channels, the various YouTube channels, we have our series. I have Althea, Hi-Fi, and Supernatural uh, series uh, that has like all Alternate world and the main character Althea, who I play, is basically has kind of lost her mind and does not know what reality is. And so the audience, when they're watching, they're kind of seeing all these different worlds. There's like visual, like the different worlds have different colors. Wizards aren't real. That one uh, episodes are currently being released every Wednesday at 1 p.m. It has 24 episodes for the pilot season, um, and we have 16 of those episodes currently released. We have eight more coming out over the next eight weeks. That that will also be going on Amazon and Broadcast TV and all of that when it's done. But that one is also a cross-platform one that will be going on to like Facebook Video, uh, Instagram TV. Uh, YouTube Red and things like that, along with uh, Amazon, so the cross platform. I have a short film that I made uh, in January that was for the uh, the massive blood drive PSA that the uh, Soska twins, the Twisted Twins, Jen and Sylvia Soska, they put on each year. I entered it into some festivals, and we were just selected the other day to be uh, one of the official selections for the uh, International Vampire Film and Arts Festival in London. Uh, what I have going on right now, two feature horror films that I am making this summer. So we have a feature and then a sequel to that feature. And right now we're working on on, on everything, getting it all, all, all the cast all lined up and everything. We're working on finishing the writing, scheduling, just kind of planning it all out right now. Uh, the, the title of those films are Park Dead, The Awakening. And then the sequel is Park Dead, The Reckoning. I do have Facebook pages for all of these projects. You want to check them out on Facebook uh, by those title names. You'll find them, their pages there. And that way you can see any updates that we post. And I always update to the pages. I'm really happy with, you know, all the cast and crew that I've had working on, on all the projects have, have been just amazing to work with. I'm looking forward to, you know, promoting them all, getting them out there. And then, oh, and then after we finish the features this summer, then we go into uh, Alchemy Academy. So Alchemy Academy is a series that I was cast in last year as one of the leads, and we did a pilot season. And uh, we're going to be doing five ten episode seasons of this series uh so ten episodes per season for five seasons and then a feature film based on that series and so those are the projects that i have going on right now that is definitely quite a bit of that's a, like a whole year's or probably two years worth of work i mean it, it's definitely going to be worth it because uh, it definitely sounds very interesting and, and when it comes to these independent films and, and other projects like this where do you think it the independent area is more triumph over these more well-known studios as well as corporate studios and so forth. Well, yeah, obviously it's really hard to, you know, get into that mainstream industry. You, you know, you just try to break your way in on that. But when you are, yeah, if you're doing one of those, then, then it's obviously going to be a lot stricter, uh, I'm sure, and, you know, what you can and can't do. So by doing uh, these independent projects, there's definitely, you know, the freedom to kind of do what you want with them. And, you know, that gives you all that creative freedom and everything else. But one thing I really enjoy about producing, because oh, that's what I haven't mentioned, is, you know, I do, along with being an actress, I also produce and direct and write and edit. And I do uh, makeup artistry. I'm a singer, musician. So I kind of contribute everything, you know, whatever I can or whatever I need (laughs) to the various projects. And uh, anyways, what I love about producing these independent projects is I love getting to call all of those shots. What I love is being able to do casting. I love casting. (laughs) I love getting to pick all of the actors and actresses that I have worked with and enjoy working with or want to work with because I admire their work. That is a really fun part of it. I mean, I love all the aspects of it. Uh, I got into all of this, you know, initially because I have always wanted to be an actress. I 
was a very young girl, and um, so I kind of always knew I wanted to do that, and then, uh, but I didn't really know how to get into the industry. You know, back when I was a kid, we didn't have, you know, the internet and everything like that, so it's a lot easier to figure things out now, I think, than it was back then, and uh, we've got, you know, a lot of great companies here in the Pacific Northwest doing independent films, lots of people that I really admire their work, and so it's cool just to be a part of that community. Now, do you think online distribution is pretty much the the way? Because you just mentioned that a lot of your stuff is going like to Amazon and stuff like that, comparing to trying to get released to other countries and or other states and stuff like that. It seems a lot more harsher, but having to get it up on a live stream or, or somewhere that just streams that the film itself through a company or so, it seems a lot easier or at least less strenuous compared to that. I mean, it, do you think it's too reliant in some ways or do you think this is the way to go? Um, well, you know, my projects, while they are all going to be on Amazon and everything like that. Also, the Park Dead films also on Amazon and uh, on broadcast TV. We have that deal for all the projects, but we are also going to be, well, I'm, I'm going to be pushing to be seeking distribution through, I don't know, a company that kind of distributes and not just online distribution, being traditional distribution on the Park Dead film. Do you think sometimes the media can be media over the mind in some some aspects when you're trying to get projects out there? Because so, sometimes the media can be really good to you or really, really, really evil to you. You know, um, so I have experienced anything with evil media yet. I'm sure it will happen at some point because it's, just, it's the way that it is. <laughs> Not everyone's going to love you all the time. You can't please everyone all the time. So you just got to do the best that you can to make, you, make your work as good as you can, you know? You're not going to please everyone. You have to know that. I'm sure that, you know, when that time comes, the easier said than done. But I, I just, you know, keep reminding myself, you know, that not everything is for everyone, and that's okay. I haven't really pushed things out to the media a lot, but I am going to be doing that push with the Park Dead films and continuing forward. I also plan on um, promoting my my projects at conventions and uh, things of that nature. So I'll be like I'm getting a booth at conventions and like advertising at conventions and some of them have film festivals at conventions that I'll, you know, submit projects to, hopefully get into some of them. But I'll be working hard to get it out there all over the place, doing more with press releases and getting things out to the media. And some of that may be good and some of it may be not so good, but that's, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta put it out there and see where it all goes. Uh, with your company as well as uh, being really Related to like other companies, do you think is this is something that is is more in in some ways more profitable for you in order to get your work out there to all these other medias uh, in terms of like Amazon and all these other companies to to get the movies out there rather than just try to get it on straight on disc. Well, straight on DVD. You mean well, we're going to have them on the DVDs as well, so they'll be available everywhere, um, not just for streaming, but also on DVD. We'll have, like, you know, beautiful, professional DVDs that they'll come out on. Um, and we will, and another thing that we do, aside from, you know, selling them on Amazon and things of that nature, is that, like, you know, we can go around and, and try to, you know, get them in certain stores or whatever. Take copies of the DVD and put them into more, like, local stores or whatever that sell that kind of stuff. So there's lots of ways to put it out there. I think that if you can get media, and especially if you can get good press, then I think that that's definitely going to be a way that can make things more profitable because the more people that know about a project and the more opportunity you have to have someone that wants to, you know, support. Now having to do this like standalone, I can imagine being like really, really difficult just doing that, but having to making some kind of a deal with other companies, like maybe they get a little bit of a profit or whatever. I mean, do you think this is more the direct route or do you think you should really just do a lot of this stuff on your own, but still have that little, little bit of a help from other people? Because everyone needs help at some point on some of this. Yeah, you know, um, so like when I did Al that was my first full-length project that I did, and so that one, I kept it really like a micro, micro crew. For Wizards, I grew the crew a little bit, and that was a lot more helpful. Uh, for Park Deads, I am growing my team even more, because I'm definitely finding out, yes, it is it is better when you can get more reliable people on your crew that can help to get the projects done faster, especially as I am getting more and more projects coming my way to complete, and I'm only one person. Person, so if I have to do all the things, then I'm not going <laughs> to get many projects done very fast. Collaborating with others is really uh, an awesome thing anyways. Man, when you get a bunch of people together on like a writing team or a story team, and you all put your ideas in together, that's where the magic happens, you know? I, I saw a thing, a meme the other day that says that, you know, when it comes to film, that, that the story is written three times in writing of the script. 
during the filming process and then during the editing process. And I posted that, I was like, that is so true. Because you come up with new things all the time. So you just add to it and make it even better. Well, collaborating with other people, I mean, that, that's it's, it's really good when you got people who are like-minded or someone that's a point of interest. But you also got people like, you know, you collaborate with them and then chances are they're not the person that you think they were. But even though they do can contribute, they don't really want to contribute in the way that you thought would be contributed to. Well, I mean, that's, I think that that's true of pretty much anything that you do in life. Sometimes you got to find out the hard way whether or not you work well with someone, no matter what you do. Um, so what I've been working on doing, gathering, you know, a team, getting a team together of people that are reliable and that I create well with, that I work well with, people who inspire and motivate each other. That's what I've been working to do. And I'm always, you know, I always want everything to be as positive as possible on my set. I like positivity. I, I want everyone to be happy. I want everyone to feel at home on my set. And when it comes to, like, pride and, and hard work ethic and all that, that, that's definitely a very important quality and very important value in any type of profession or anything that you're doing. But do you think sometimes it's just not enough in, in some aspects of, of this business? Pride and work ethic. Man, you know, I mean, obviously those are great things. Um, you got to have a good work ethic for sure. And, and pride in your work will help you strive to put out the very best product that you can or to always be improving in what you do. It takes a lot of motivation and determination blood, sweat, tears, a whole lot of stress sometimes, anxiety, you name it. <laughs> a lot of that goes into the creative process. And you have to, it, it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Producing, not for the faint of heart. I have learned that. Now, you do a lot of producing. I mean, was this something that is just a part of that, you know, a part of the mini hats that you do just in case you have to do it? Or, I mean, is this something that you, in part, have side of the career aside from the acting perspective of you? When I first started out, like I said, I was, a, I was a young girl. I knew I wanted to be an actress. I didn't know how to work my way into the industry. So then um, a couple of years, well, a couple of years ago, in 2012, several years ago, PA, production assistant gigs, I met an actress who brought her portfolio. Leo. A shout out to Ariana Serena because she's amazing and I can't wait till one day when we get to work together. She showed me her gorgeous portfolio. Um, she does modeling and stuff too. And I was looking at all these amazing pictures with these wardrobe and the makeup and the hair and I was like, wow, makeup. Oh, there's people that do that for a living and that's the way that I could maybe get into the industry uh, because I didn't just didn't know how to get in with acting or I didn't feel comfortable, I guess, <laughs> getting in through acting. I didn't really feel like I knew quite what to do back then. So I started doing makeup and uh, at first I took an online course, a makeup course, and then I went some in-person training. Carrie Herta of Colorbox Makeup Studios. Carrie is a Hollywood makeup artist. She works on lots of big projects, like, you know, makeup artists and stars. She does the uh, promo uh, ads every year for American Horror Story, which are amazing, and I love that show. So I got to I got the opportunity to be trained by Carrie, which was really awesome. Um, and so then I started building my makeup portfolio and working on different projects and until I started getting to do that in film. And as that moved forward, you know, it started with me doing the makeup and then putting myself out there for acting because now I had some people I was connected with. And and then uh, my the executive producers that I work with on a lot of these projects now, they had wanted to uh, be production partners with me. And uh, my production partner and my my boyfriend of over 16 years, Larry Hawkins and I, we uh, we started producing together and partnering up with Blue Forge Films, and, and that brought a lot of opportunities for these projects. Building up that collaborative base of people to work with is always a great thing. Now go ahead and plug in any websites uh, of your current projects that we can check out right now, anything that, that has been recent release, like I said, anything that's on DVD. As far as producing stuff, I'm still waiting for these projects to be on DVD. Uh, the Life You Save film, uh, that one's complete, but it's going through festivals right now. It's a short film, and I plan on including that in, like, as a book bonus thing on some of the DVDs when uh, my full-length projects come out, but I have films that I've acted in. Uh, if you go on to uh, Amazon, same DVD. Oh, A1C, Agents First Class. That one is also on Amazon. That one is like a parody version of like um, uh, Charlie's Angels type of thing. And A1C, like the three leads that play like the angels, as it were, are, are their actresses that also have type 1 diabetes. So that's where the A1C comes in, <laughs> but it also is an acronym for Agents First Class. I played one of the villains in it, and that was a lot of fun as well. 
there's a bunch more on there right there. And oh, also, as for uh, the Park Dead films, we are getting ready to uh, get the crowdfunding campaign online for that. By the time this show airs, it very well may be on there. Uh, I'm planning on doing that on uh, Indiegogo. Um, so please watch out for the Park Dead Awakening and Park Dead The Reckoning Indiegogo campaign and uh, any support that we get will be greatly appreciated and help to make the films as awesome as they can be. All right, that's very cool. And there you have it, everybody. That's Angela Farrow, actress. Bye, everyone. Thank you.